All right, we are at the top of the hour, so we'll go ahead and get started. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone, um, depending on where you are. Thank you for joining us today for a discussion on the five reasons companies need an integrated maintenance, repair, and operations value chain. My name is Lauren Martin, and I am a Senior Marketing Coordinator here at Innovaptive and will be acting as your moderator for today's webinar. Um, just want to go through a few housekeeping items before we jump in. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please submit those into the Q&A box and we'll address as many as possible at the end of the webcast. In the event that we aren't able to get to your question, we'll follow up with you directly. This webinar will be recorded and all attendees will receive a copy of that recording within the next day or so. Without further ado, I'd like to kick us off by introducing our speaker for today, Innovactive's Chief Supply Chain Evangelist, Richard Sandal. In his role, Richard partners with industry leaders to transform their warehouse operations by empowering teams with the technology and best practices to create positive change. Prior to joining Innovaptive, Richard worked for Shell, focusing on both downstream and upstream operations. And during his tenure at the company, he led the successful deployment of Shell's global standard SAP system, GSAP, in the lubricants business across 37 countries, and was later responsible for leading operational excellence initiatives in 200 MRO warehouses globally. Richard, welcome to today's webinar. Thanks for the introduction, Lauren. I'm looking forward to today's session. Awesome. So I just wanna take a look really quick here at the agenda um, that we have planned for today. We'll start off by looking at the definitions and scope of maintenance, repair and operations and the value chain. Um, we'll dive into the top five challenges that come with MRO look at the technology solutions uh, that address those challenges, and then we'll go into the Q&A session at the end. So let's just kick it off. Um, so first question for you, Richard, for our listeners who maybe aren't so familiar uh, with today's topic, could you start by explaining what we mean by maintenance, repair, and operations in the value chain? Sure, thanks for the question. So maintenance, repair, and operations, in simple terms is about keeping plant and equipment up and running. If the plant is down and you're not producing, then obviously the company is potentially losing revenue. And if you're operating, say, an oil and gas platform in the Gulf of Mexico, that could mean millions of dollars in lost production and revenue. Value chain thinking was really developed by Michael Porter uh, way back in the, in the 1980s. And it really focuses on a series of linked activities that add value to the product or the organization. So it includes supply chain, but it also include, includes lots of other elements such as product design and quality. So if you apply supply chain thinking to maintenance, repair and operation, it's only when equipment is being installed or a, a repair is being completed that real value is added to the organization. So uh, in Evaptive, we talk about the maintenance, repair, and operation value chain. Yeah, and in your definitions here, you know, you describe the value chain as a series of linked activities. Could you explain the, the various components of the value chain and how those work together? Sure. And uh, I think this, this diagram kind of shows uh, the, the, the concept, if you like, of MRO value chain. It, it shows the series of linked and integrated activities that are going to produce real value to the organization. So let's just run through each of those in, in turn and provide a bit of a bit more detail. So firstly, on the left hand side, we've got MRO suppliers and inbound logistics. These are the manufacturers of equipment, spare parts. And suppliers will often have their own network of distributors and resellers to serve their national and international clients. Supporting the international value chain is complex. So if you take as an example, for example, oil and, oil and gas, Houston in Texas is, has a large base of suppliers and they're supplying customers across the globe. If you're on a remote production platform, say in offshore Indonesia, then the value chain would be very long and complex. It's going to include road transport, road transport to the port, customs brokers, freight forwarders, international shipping companies. So definitely very complex. Then we come to the warehousing side. Uh, MRO, MRO warehouses typically would only be serving one plant or a local area. 
they could be operated directly by a, by the company themselves or indeed by a third party logistics provider. MRO warehouses need to store a variety of equipment, so from large items to very small parts. So they need a variety of storage type, lock storage, racking and shelving. Frequently, equipment can be stored outside uh, in things like pipes, cables and large equipment. So it's not unusual in warehousing in MRO to see actually a larger lay down yard area than actually covered space. The next stage of the process is outbound logistics. Uh, this involves transporting materials that re are required on work orders to plants, factories, or mines. And the actual scope of out outbound logistics will vary considerably. If you're serving a small factory, then it might just be engineers walking up to the warehouse. But if you're serving a large mine site, 50 square miles, then you're gonna have several drop-off points on the site. Uh, where technicians can come up and pick up. And the final stage of the value chain is maintenance. So this is kind of the last link. Um, obviously, nothing can start until materials arrive on site. Um, we know technicians are expensive resources and often wrench time can be as low as 30%. So an efficient value chain really is critical. Yeah, and I, you know, I do just want to go back quickly to that point you made about wrench time just now. Can you elaborate a bit more on the significance of wrench time? Like, why is that metric so important? Sure. I mean, wrench time is a really important key performance measure for, for maintenance. It's measuring the productive time of your technicians, the time they're actually doing real maintenance work. And obviously, we mentioned the figure of 30%, which is fairly typical uh, in many organizations, which means 70% of the time they're unproduct unproductive. That means they're waiting for work, maybe collecting spare parts from the warehouse. And if you've got 100 maintenance technicians, uh, you can improve wrench time, say, by just 15 minutes a day. This would be equivalent to a multi-million dollar saving on an annual basis. Yeah, absolutely. And from everything you've said, it's clear that, you know, the MRO value chain can be pretty complex with a lot of different parties involved. I'd love to see um, if we could explore some of the common challenges that companies face as a result of that complexity and maybe how that affects their day-to-day -day operations. Can you go into that? Sure. And there, there are lots of challenges. You know, we highlighted earlier that these value chains are global in nature. Uh, the parts and equipment could be in transit for, for many weeks. Uh, it can be very difficult to know exactly where the parts and equipment are at any time. But we, we've highlighted kind of five key challenges on the slide here. So we start with limited value chain integration. And that's between different partners that we talked about earlier. And if you, I think if you compare, say, the MRO value chain with consumer goods, uh, you'll see quite big differences. So, for example, in, in consumer goods, we see a high level of integration. Uh, so consumer goods value chain, you have raw material suppliers, manufacturers and retailers working very closely together. They're going to be sharing information on sales, future demand and really collaborating to make sure the value chain is very responsive. In contrast, I would say MRO value chain is there's much less collaboration between partners. Just as an example, I mean, equipment suppliers that we talked about earlier, they may have implemented auto identification of materials in their own operation, but those same, same barcodes cannot be read by the customers. The next area that, that we see as a challenge is, is really relates to silos between maintenance and, and supply chain in, in particular. And often the, in the organization, maintenance and supply chain have separate reporting lines. So they're reporting through to different people and it can lead to a them and as mentality. Innovaptive do a lot of work in this area. And we are, I think we are beginning to see these silos being broken down to the extent where you do start, you're starting to see common reporting lines. And even where there aren't common reporting lines, uh, joint teams being set up to, to address issues. And I think once you start to see better collaboration, uh, they begin to look at trade-offs and, and both organizations will start to benefit. So just as an example, we did a piece of work recently where the organization decided to Im implement a rule about no walk-ups to the warehouse. So 
They didn't want engineers coming up to pick up spare parts. Um, and instead of doing that, they provided an outbound delivery service to the engineers around the site. And by doing that, they enjoyed both an increase in wrench time, but also in a, an increase in warehouse productivity. So that, but certainly benefits through, through collaboration if we can get to that stage. The, the third area I wanted to touch on was low maintenance productivity operational visibility and infantry accuracy. Companies have invested significant sums over the last 20 years in their ERP systems, but surprisingly, many remote workers in the field, factories and warehouses remain disconnected and continue to have to operate with inefficient paper-based processes. So for example, maintenance engineers need to return to the office in order to process a transaction in the ERP system or to collect their next assignment. And there's often a time lag between physical work being completed and updates to the ERP system. So you don't have true visibility of operations. And the fourth area, I think it's really important, uh, weak or missing business processes. So we mentioned about ERP systems being implemented, but there are gaps in these systems, particularly in terms of how they support MRO processes. So we've kind of highlighted some of the weaknesses on the slide here. So I'll just pick one or two of those. So on the kitting side, kitting is a really important process in MRO. This is where you're assembling work orders in advance, typically of a shutdown or a turnaround. Uh, you need to be sourcing product, not only from your own warehouse, but directly from suppliers. So you have to take the non-stock and the stocked items, consolidate them together as a kit, stage it in the warehouse and await for call off. And that process typically is not supported very well in ERP systems to the extent that we see a lot of companies have developed their own customized solutions. The other area of weakness is in terms of the returns process. So um, imagine at the time that the work order is created by the maintenance staff or by the, the work planner, they don't know exactly what's going to be ne needed for the work. It's not until they open the equipment up and they, they see the full scope maybe of what needs to be repaired. But there's a tendency, I would say, for over-ordering just in, on a just-in-case basis. So that means typically at the end of the, when the work order is completed, you have a lot of excess stock and that should ideally be returned to the warehouse. That often isn't the case. It ends up being stored by the technician in a cupboard or in a desk drawer. And if you've got a hundred technicians doing that, it soon mounts up. So you have a lot of gray infantry, which is infantry outside of the system. And the final area I'd like to touch on is preservation. Preservation is, is a unique sort of process that you see in the MRO warehouses. Um, you would typically have insurance spares in MRO facilities where, which are, uh, are parts and equipment that you need to keep on a contingency basis. And those parts and equipment should be maintained in the warehouse, maybe oiling, greasing, turning rotors on rotating equipment, that type of thing. But in reality, we see in a lot of operations that doesn't actually happen. Um, so when it comes around to needing that equipment, it's not fit for purpose and it has to be scrapped. And the, the downside is you, you may end up affecting the efficiency of the plant operation. And the final area to, to mention is poor maintenance planning. Poor maintenance planning is characterized typically by a high proportion of corrective work orders. Basically, you know, companies waiting for things to go wrong before they actually fix them. And a poor planning process will have a big knock-on effect on the rest of the value chain and you become a high cost operation, poor service with high levels of equipment downtime. So the whole organization is really operating in a firefighting mode. Right, and while these are common challenges that we've seen um, over the years in this space, of course, of course, each organization is different and often struggles with one or two more than others. Um, so because of that, we wanted to pull the audience here to see which of these issues resonates with you, if any. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and launch that poll. Yeah, so again, so as you take a look at this, just encourage you to really focus on which issues, you know, we've listed that seems to pose the biggest challenge in your MRO value chain. So whether that's poor maintenance planning, 
um, inventory availability, low inventory availability, maintenance and supply chain and silos, um, paper-based processes, or maybe you don't experience these issues. So I'm seeing, it's kind of going back and forth and seeing a split pretty much between the, the operational silos, poor maintenance planning, um, some low inventory availability. Give it a couple more seconds here. Okay. All right, so I wanna get your feedback, Richard. What are you thinking? Is this surprising? Is this about what you would, what would you, what you would expect? Yeah, I mean, firstly, thanks for responding, everyone. Yeah, we're seeing the kind of uh, the higher scores are against the poor maintenance planning and, and the maintenance and supply chain operating in silos. So th those answers certainly resonate with, with us. And um, we'll be coming on a little bit later to, to kind of say how you can address some of these issues. Yeah, all right. Um, we'll keep on with our discussion, but it's definitely... Um, interesting to see your answers there. So now that we've looked at the challenges faced by MRO value chains, um, oops, just go back here. Um, what's your take on technology that you've seen work well for industry leaders and you know where this makes sense for companies maybe to start? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I think um, first thing to say about technology, I think there's so many different options out there at the moment, certainly, if I look back on my career, there's there's a lot more technology available now uh, than there was at the start of my career. So, you know, we talk about artificial intelligence, blockchain, augmented reality, Internet of Things. So it, it, it's there's a lot of options out there. I think it, it's around choosing appropriate technology. And in Evaptive, our mantra is always, you know, start with a business problem you're trying to solve. Uh, don't start with the technology. For Just as an example, I mean, robots... Um, usage is increasing in warehouses and they may they may be great in a high volume warehouse operation but probably would make little sense in a MRO warehouse but let's start to look at you know some of the options out there in in the value chain what what technology should we be looking at firstly on the maintenance planning side I um, mean maintenance planning is split between long range planning which could be looking at up to 2 years ahead and would include things like shutdown and turnarounds and then you go to the other extreme where you're just scheduling maybe for the following week. And so you're, the planning tools need to be able to accommodate both of those scenarios. I think it's fair to say that the maintenance planning tools offered by ERP systems are fairly basic. And a lot of companies go for best of breed solutions. So we work very closely with a company called Sim. that They have a tool called Visual Planner. And I, I think these third party tools offer a wider range of functionality and a, an overall better user experience. A key objective of planning is, is really to come up with a balanced maintenance program. So typically you would want around about 65% of your work orders to be preventative, around 25% predictive and 10% reactive. Moving on to uh, procurement and infantry management, uh, it, it's another another key area. And again, I think another area where you would say that um, ERP systems uh, are quite basic. So most ERP systems work on material requirement planning, MR, MRP, and uh, they're working on reorder points and reorder quantities. And these basic methods can't really meet the challenges of unpredictable MRO demand patterns. And, and, and the size of the problem is huge. I mean, we know oil companies that have got billions of dollars, and I, I did say billions of dollars of money tied up in infantry. So there are, you know, there's plenty of opportunities here. One of the things that we're seeing companies doing is starting to develop more sophisticated algorithms for infantry management. So they're looking at historical demand patterns. Um, one particular example I know of is Shell, Equinor, the Norwegian oil company and Microsoft have developed an infantry optimizer tool and uh, they've started to deploy that and they're seeing multi-million savings in infantry without having to reduce service levels. Use of mobile online catalogs is another area which I, I think uh, is worth looking at. In the past, companies have been faced by the challenge of people buying outside of existing contracts and thereby incurring higher prices. 
Online digital catalogs make it easy to order, but also provide better control on the whole procurement to pay process. When it comes to, to warehousing, um, it's still very common to see MRO warehouses operated on paper-based processes with transactions being processed on desktops or, or in the office. Uh, a modern mobile solution direct, linked directly to your e ERP system, allowing scanning of barcodes is a big step forward. And the other area we're starting to see is uh, increased use of warehouse management systems and you get greater use of uh, more functionality, basically bin level control. And um, one, one example would be we're starting to see companies use SAP extended warehouse management, which is SAP's most sophisticated solution for warehousing. So things are changing quickly, I think, in the warehouse space as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the maintenance execution side, so again, I think um, integration with the ERP system, if you're able to provide your maintenance staff with ruggedized tablets linked directly with the ERP system, then you're going to be able to see big benefits. So that will enable them to create notifications and work orders in the field. They can check spare parts availability in the warehouse. They'll have visibility into repair history and use of things like digital work instructions. And they're, they're going to be able to post transactions in real time without having to return to the office. Uh, we've seen typically 10 to 30 percent improvements in wrench time with our customers when mobile solutions are deployed. And finally, one, one area to mention wearables, which has received a kind of boost from the pandemic with a travel ban. So we see a lot of um, collaboration activity going on between a local engineer and a remote subject matter expert using Zoom and Teams, but putting that onto a wearable device. Yeah, that's great. You know, there's a, a solution fit for every challenge um, that we've talked about and opportunities for integration and alignment across all of them, which we know makes a big impact on efficiency. Um, so on that note, Richard, what are the overall benefits that a company may expect to see from running an M integrated MRO value chain? Sure. And this is the last slide. I just kind of pulled together really, you know, some of the things that we've talked about earlier on. I, I think, you know, one of the things that we're looking at doing is overcoming this silo mentality that we talked about earlier, maintenance supply chain, operating together and in a truly integrated value chain. We have seen earlier that technology can help, you know, the technology is out there that can help resolve these issues and multi-billion, million dollar savings are available, I think, from things like increasing plant uptime. It really starts with a robust maintenance plan and increased parts availability. As we saw a modern mobile solution with auto identification can ensure the right product is picked. And so therefore you're delivering everything that the the, the engineer needs in the, in the field, you're delivering it at the right time to the correct drop-off point. So when you have this level of integration, you're going to be ensuring that maintenance orders are completed on time and you're delivering the perfect work order every time. The end game is really about higher plant uptime and revenue for the company. Yeah, thanks, Richard. Appreciate that summary. And, you know, we ran through a lot in the past 25 minutes or so, but um, I think that's just a testament to how much opportunity there is with MRO integration. So hopefully you all found this valuable. Uh, but I do want to make sure that we can get to as many questions as possible. So let's go ahead and jump into Q&A. Um, and I am seeing that we received a few here, which is great. So keep those coming. Um, first question that I'm seeing, what use of wearables and drones are you seeing in MRO operations? Yeah, great question. Um, I think we mentioned wearables earlier. We touched on it in terms of remote collaboration, you know, driven by, by the current pandemic, but there are other opportunities. So one of the areas where we do a lot of work is digital work instructions. And these are kind of instructions that tell the technician what they need to do, you know, a step-by-step guide to completing the work. Um, you kind of move to augmented reality, which would be the engineer, you know, having uh, smart glasses, 
being able to see something like a video superimposed on, on this real world view, explaining step by step of how to actually complete the work. So, yeah, I think augment, augmented reality is definitely uh, a growth area for the future. The other one that we see is use of drones as well for maintenance inspections. So it, it's much more effective to fly a drone, say, around a chimney to, to do an inspection for corrosion rather than having to use cranes or b even build scaffolding, which is very expensive. So, yeah, definitely, I think wearables and drones, we, we're definitely seeing increased usage. Yeah. Um, another question that just came through. So what is the what have you seen the impact of COVID um, be on MRO management as as um, I guess you've, you've experienced over the past year. What's been that impact? Yeah, yeah. It's it's difficult to kind of do, do a sort of webinar without touching on COVID. It, it, it's had big impacts on on the value chain. So, you know, sort of immediately after the pandemic, you saw situations where um, automotive production lines ground to a halt because they couldn't get po component supplies for, from China. I mean, we, we did some interesting work on uh, developing uh, health checklists on, on a mobile device. So we can actually ask workers to complete those while they were still at home and before they actually got, went to the, uh, the work location. And so we, th that was an interesting development. And then I think companies were doing a lot of practical things like maybe uh, putting on extra shifts or extending the working week so they didn't have so many people working, working closely together. So technology was used to, to it's been used to, to help overcome COVID. And I think it's really acted as a, a spur to make things more quickly um, because of COVID. Right. Um, how would you improve Greystock? Yeah, that's an interesting one. Uh, we used to, when I was at Shell, we used to call them squirrel stores. They, they used to dot up uh, around the plant very, very quickly. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's discipline, I think, around, you know, import, informing people of, of why it's important to get those back through, through the value chain. Um, obviously, you need a good process for doing that. So you need a proper returns process. If things are not uh, used by the maintenance technician, then, you know, being able to create returns delivery notes, uh, hopefully in a, in, a, in a mobile device. So you digitize the process that gives us visibility to the warehouse. They see what's coming back. They can identify the problem that, oh, sorry, they can identify the product. They know exactly what it is. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a mixture of, you know, people, education, a good process. And, and it's another area where technology can help. All right. Um, can you elaborate more on inventory optimization tools companies are using? Yeah. So, you know, we mentioned the old traditional tools, the, the MRP. I think it's it, it's still widely used. Um, the example that I that I used was um, it was it, it was announced, I think, about six months ago that there was going to be collaboration between Shell, Equinor and Microsoft. So. I think Shell had done the initial development of the tool and, and then um, they worked closely with Microsoft as, as a partner to kind of um, probably make the tool uh, easier to use and, and, and more user friendly. But I, I, I think there are other things happening in, in the infantry space as well with this, this idea that you, you try to make your value chain more, more responsive. So in consumer goods, for example, we, we see this concept of demand sensing, which is, is much more around responding to short-term changes in demand uh, rather than trying to forecast too far ahead and having a very agile supply chain or value chain that's able to respond to changes. Right. Um, okay. I do see a couple more coming through, but I think we just have time for one more. So um, we'll get with those. We didn't get to address their question. The last one, how can we improve on QHSE to make better impacts on MRO benefits to reduce costs and improve productivity. Was that was that Q, Q H H S E? H S E, yes. Yeah, quality. I, I take that to be quality, health and safety. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I think this is an area where technology can 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 help. So, you know, I mentioned earlier about the uh, 
the safety checklist that we or the health checklist that we developed as part of the the COVID response. But one of the areas that we do um, in our in our in our business is, you know, we would have um, checklists that that people have to complete before they start the maintenance work. And again, that's all on a mobile device, so you're not expecting people to carry reams of paper with them. Um, so I, I, I think technology can definitely help, and there's controls that you can put in, like even with COVID, you know, if people get too close together in, in a warehouse, having an alarm signal. So definitely uh, an opportunity. All right. Um, well, that's all the time we have for questions. I want to be conscious of your schedules, um, everything else you might have going on. But as I mentioned earlier, we'll be in touch shortly with a copy of the recording and to address any of the questions that we didn't get to today. Um, and at the close of this webinar, you'll be directed to a short survey as well, where we'd love to get your feedback about today's presentation, presentation hear anything about um, you know, what you wanna see in the future. So please take a few mo moments to fill that out. Um, for more information about how Innovaptive supports an integrated value chain with our connected worker platform, please visit our website to view additional resources or schedule a demo. But that wraps up today's discussion. Thank you, Richard, for your presentation. And thank you all for spending some time with us today. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.